Hello, 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 beautiful world. This is Faris Al Hajri, PhD, um, presently in Virginia, Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center, the 2010 award winning research park. I love this quote, you know, that's been uh, done here in Cogro, which is in the middle of uh, the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center. Uh, this place is 180 acres where corporates are in this place for the purpose of research and development. And we believe in research and development because our two strategies, main strategies, are lying com completely fully focusing into one, strat the first strategy is to conduct clinical research studies of the effectiveness of hot water therapy, aqua revitalized therapy. The other strategy, so, so, so in this case, we can prove the efficacy. Once we get the recognition from the scientific arena, then the world will embrace because we had to be called pseudoscience or whatever you call. We don't want to, people to feel that we are cheating people or we lie to people. What has changed my life and my family life, my entire family, my wife, Kais and Sami, my, our two children, and as well as many of the followers, who life, their lives have changed tremendously. They are not into drug for the past 13 years consecutively. And uh, with this issue, the pandemic of the coronavirus, COVID-19, the world is locked down. We are, a lot of people are being frightened by what's happening to the world. But on the other side, when we see about the problem of the immune system, the problem of people whom the immune system have been compromised, when we hear the news about the target, the prime target of people who being, most of the death occur, that's what the media say, what's the story we can see everywhere. Most of the people who die are, are those under medical condition. What does it mean? Why under medical condition? Why the young generation that don't die with coronavirus? Why people with strong immune system who are healthy, they do not die? They found out that you may carry a virus, coronavirus, in your body, and it can just pass by just normal without feeling any think just feeling a little something of a cold or cough or something like that then it pass away so why why coronavirus has divided the society in two group one under medical condition and other society is healthy it's so one reason because those who have compromised the immune system by means of relying in taking drugs medication Time after time after time, then your immune system is compromised. And the moment your immune system is compromised, then your body starts to rely fully on drugs, medications. So when you have any virus entering your body, any bacteria, any infection, any foreign invader, the immune system is no longer strong enough to protect you. So this is a game changer. Come on. We need the world to wake up. We need the world to wake up. This has changed. Well, so why do we focus this uh, recording? The leadership, the modern leadership in the first and the 21st century. Why? Why do you talk about the modern leadership in the 21st century? Okay. Life is a school that has an endless process of learning. Every day, we learn and learn and learn. From the time I moved with my family here in Virginia, and we're supposed to be in California, that's what we decided to be with my, also my, where my parents and all live. But then I decided to be in Virginia. When I joined here, I landed here, me and my wife, and Sami, my son, our son. So we landed here in Virginia to explore Virginia, because that's one of the states we do not visit. And we wanted to explore Virginia. Wanted to explore Blacksburg. And when we landed here, because Kais, our son, when he moved here to study, he 
in Virginia Tech corporates, I mean, in Virginia Tech Polytechnic and State University. So we found the city is beautiful, amazing. It's more than Switzerland. I visited Switzerland several times. I saw Zurich, Geneva, and other uh, countries in Europe, in Africa, in uh, Middle East, uh, in um, Asian countries. Um, today, I count more than 25 states already visited in the United States of America. S uh, many countries have visited, including Australia. But to tell the truth, I have never seen a city that I call it a small heaven on earth, like Blacksburg, particularly here in Virginia. Why? Why? Why do I f did I find that Blacksburg is more even, even than Zurich, which is in Switzerland? I consider Blacksburg the Switzerland of the world, not just the United States. There are many reasons. Number one, it's a Virgin. The name Virginia come, I believe, I believe, come for Virgin because the nature. But Blacksburg is completely unique. That's number one. So the environment is well preserved. There is no project can be ha can happen in this place without passing the community. Even if it's a government project, whatever the size of the project, could be even a multi-billion dollar project, if the community refuse, then the project cannot be executed. That's number one. So it's a project, if it's going to harm the environment, they will put it, they will completely disqualify it, and it will never pass. It's the people power. And the people here, they want to preserve this place as a virgin and touch nature. It's completely unique. I mean, you name it. Number two, the people here. The people here are very open minded than any place on earth I've seen. When I say open mind, means they are completely into intercultural competence. What did I, you know, I try to learn through curiosity and how things work. So what did I found through curiosity and how things work? I found, well, Virginia Tech Polytechnic and State University has more than 100 nationalities, students studying in Virginia Tech. So because of that, and because Blacksburg is a university city, the population of Blacksburg is about, I think, I may be a little bit uh, wrong exactly, but it's on this kind of 45,000. It's a small population. And majority are students. So the local here are just only 16 or 30, something like that, 16 or 17,000. The balance are students. That's what this city, when it's a holiday, summer holiday, like that, it's completely it, comp super quiet. <laughs> they call it uh, the, the dead city. Dead city by means everything's so quiet, so quiet, because students, they, they travel, they go back to the states, countries, and so on. So that's what, so the, the issue is that it's, a, it's like it, it has brought the entire world here because of the students. The remaining are the staff the, related to the Virginia Tech and other related projects here within around and the local people here. They're just only less, I, less, I mean, it's less than 16,000. Well, this is the two, number two. Number three is that because this university is well known, Virginia Tech, most of the people here, they're inclined into research and development. There are a lot of research. And because of the correlation between the Virginia Tech, Polytechnic and State University, and the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center, this beautiful place, VTCRC, on 180 acres, where companies, these corporates are located, they are into research and development of uh, some of them into highly advanced technology, like the artificial intelligence, like satellites, like about uh, uh, Mars exploration, and so on and so on. So many people here, they're into that research and development. They are very open mind. They are, most of them, they're scientists, they are researchers, they're prominent personalities. So for that reason, combination of all this together has made this city very unique. And I'm so glad to be part of this city. So that's the reason when I landed here, I found something very unique. There's a very strange, very unique spirit that attracted me and my wife 
And we said we decided we're going to be here. And Sammy also joined us, said, yes, Dad, we made the right decision not to be in California. I also thought California because of the lot of money, a lot of uh, big businesses. So we, what we want to do is going to be very, very successful. Number two, because California is a state that I'll accept the practice of medicine. If you are like, for example, me, I'm on alternative medicine. I can easily practice there in California. Whereas in uh, Virginia, there are some, uh, I have to put a disclaimer that I'm not a licensed doctor and so on, so on, so on. But I can use as an educator, which I'm doing now. So I use the hot water as an educator. So it's the people to choose. And there's not any toxic involved, so there's nothing to worry about it. Nobody can say can tell you stop taking hot water. So that itself is a school that has made us to learn and learn and learn. And being particularly here in VTCRC, there are a lot of events that are happening here that we try to attend as many as possible. These events we learn a lot. And the moment we move also in Congo, this Congo they made it very unique very unique by means the companies that are here the corporates that are here they receive free consultation by various consultants the sbdc small business development council the sba small business administration of course the sbdc is under sba and uh, the ramp so many organizations and you have the corporate lawyer you have consultants, professional consultants. You have a business consultant. The corporate lawyer t give you some guidance about the laws, about the about the you know to understand about the business law, and uh, the guidance and so on. And you have uh, other consultant, prominent consultant, well experienced, who provide you all these lectures to teach you how to do strategy, how to do business plan, how to do all this, and turning an a, a, an idea into a product. That's what you can see here. Together we create. It has a lot of meaning. Together we create. You know, so being here, you meet prominent people, you exchange information, you find somebody like minded who accept your idea, who connect you somewhere somehow with a very, very marginable cost. So you don't have to spend a lot so you can really build a strong foundation to become a global a global uh, uh, entrepreneur. So our vision is to become a global entrepreneur. How can revitalize to become the brand, a global brand? So we're working to the strategy number two, which talk about strategy number one. Number two is to have the wellness projects on different sizes. Small project, medium project, large and much larger. larger. So wellness center, wellness resort and spa, wellness center lodging facility, wellness city, uh, and so on. Wellness organization, non-profit, non-profit. Okay, so each one will have a different dedicated task. So this is what we are doing. We're working hard and we believe we're gonna be there. Because Napoleon Hill, Napoleon Hill said, whatever the mind can conceive, the mind shall receive. And also all the books teach us the same thing. So science teaches us one side, other books teach us the same thing. I mean, we could see, I mean, civilization believe into that. What you believe, you will achieve. Just be patient. One of our mentors here told us, never quit. That's one of the secrets of success. Never quit. We said, yes, never quit. We'll do our best. So wh why this kind of brainstorming? Why we believe into that? Why we into, went into learning every day? Life is a school that has an endless process of learning. Every day, we learn and learn and learn. Well, so, if life is a school, and going back also when I used to work in the uh, Ministry of Housing in Oman as a technical ex expert in the Office of Undersecretary, but I passed also into different categories of my job. Uh, one of the time, we got a uh, minister, means uh, Secretary of State here, the call of housing. So we, we get that privilege of having uh, a huge budget to go for training. On one of the training I underwent, a series of a lot of trainings, a lot of training. I received that training is about brainstorming. So brainstorming is not about predicting the future. No, it's not about to know what will happen tomorrow. Nobody can predict the future. You need to know this. Nobody. It's just only sometimes just coincidence. But remember, you can do brainstorming to understand how things work. That's why I say curiosity and how things work. So you learn, you want to see how things work, and you become curious. 
to learn and learn and learn. Then you come to realize, where am I standing? Where am I do? What am I doing? How am I going to change the game? How am I going to do this? How, what am I supposed to do it? As much as you have a good intention, you don't harm this society. You do it and you are straightforward. You're honest. Pay your credit, eh? Make sure you pay your credit. So uh, maintain a good credibility. And don't be a sort of science. Don't give fake information. If you don't know anything, just give information. Say, I don't know. I'm going to search about this. This I know. This I am to, to the best I could. OK. So when we talk about brainstorming, we can realize that the coronavirus one side has caused damage to the economic, to the world economy. Am I right? Coronavirus has put the hundreds of millions under, you know, in their own house. So, but one side, the damage of the economy hmm, is a big change. The moment things get back to normal, there will be a mega change in this place, in the entire world. The world economy, we believe, eh, is going to be stronger than it was before, than ever before. Now, at this point we're talking about is the leadership. The leadership is going to change. Leadership in politics, leadership in science, leadership in religious affiliation, really leadership in uh, technology, leadership in society. Hmm. What does it mean? Why we talk about the leadership in the modern, the modern leadership in the 21st century, more especially after coronavirus, after this incident? Hmm. This is very important. You come to realize most of the politicians will be young generations. Eh? When you talk about young generations between 30 and 40, mm, this is very important. You can look at the Prime Minister of Canada. Mm? He's a young, and so on. So these young generations are be very strong, very motivated. So we have to understand. We need to be strongly supporting these Generation Z, what they we call them Gen Z, because they are from 1980 and above. The Gen Z that they're now taking over, we need to understand their demand. We need to salute their demand. We need to cooperate and coordinate with the demand. And like myself, I'm 56 or 58 years old, yes, but I understand by supporting this young generation, I will achieve what I want to achieve. Otherwise, it's another like a French word, coup d'etat, means get out. We don't want you. So any place. I said, politicians going to be young generation, leadership, CEOs, and uh, these two prominent personalities are going to be the young generation. So those young, uh, older generations, 50s and above, you need just to maintain your grip by being like advisor, maintain your correlation with them. So do not confront them. I don't say be afraid of them, but be congruent with them. Understand their demand. Jump into their soul. Go back in time when you were into their age. You used to say, when I'm going to be growing old, I'm going to show them they don't understand me. They don't give me a chance. So, but today, they think the same thing, but they have all the tools. They have the social media. They have the internet. They have a freedom of speech. They have everything. They have even what you call the people power. People power. They stand. They can change the even rules. They can go and collect just like that 20,000 votes and make a petition and change the law. And the government is, to, is forced to accept to change the law because the people power. So these young generations are the leaders, already the leaders that going to take over everywhere. You're going to see young scientists. When I say young scientists, you know, last couple of days I saw a very young child, 12 years old, has been, you know, uh, taken to do PhD in Harvard University. Mm, what does it mean? But 12 years old or 15 years old to be in Harvard University. So that means he, that ch child didn't go through the process of all the elementary, which is what? You know, primary, six years, and then uh, elementary, high school, six years. That's the 12 years. And then going to college, another what? Uh, four years or five years or more. So he, he, that person needs to be 20 years, you know, to be or, or 22, to be reaching the PhD. How could it be that to 15 years old or 12 years old could become, uh, you know, PhD uh, in a Harvard University? Because they found that he's a genius. He explored something. He discovered something. He did something that it's about the mind. 